Thank you so much for joining us for our sixth form webinar, which is designed to help you get to know a little bit more about the future of the sixth form. So whether you're in year 11 or you're currently a year 12, I hope the next few minutes are going to give you the opportunity to understand what is in store for the future. And welcome to all the parents as well, who I'm sure will be watching, and I hope you too will find this of enormous value. So without further ado, I'm thrilled to be able to welcome our new director of Sixth Form, Mr. Johnson, who has come here today to talk to you um, about his vision for the Sixth Form at Swiss. Welcome. Oh, thank you, Mr. Miller. Um, hello, everyone. It's uh, great to virtually meet you. My name is Connor Johnson, and I'd just like to start by saying I'm absolutely delighted to be the new director of Six Forum here at Swoops. Um, I'm going to start off today, and I'm going to tell you just a little bit about myself. I've uh, produced a CV for you, a little picture CV for you guys, just to give you a bit more details about me and who I am and who's coming to the Six Forum. So as you might have guessed, um, I'm not from around here. I'm originally from the Republic of Ireland, which is where I did my undergraduate degree at the University of Galway. Um, I studied economics and classical civilization. After this, I then took a gap year and went traveling around Australia and Southeast Asia for about a year or so, after which point I went back to Ireland and worked in the financial sector for a few years. I then decided to become a teacher and moved to Wales, where I obtained my PGCE and worked in a sixth form college and a school, local school there. After this point, I then moved to London, where I obtained my uh, master's in education and my MPQSL, and I worked in a variety of different uh, schools from there on. I'm currently the assistant director of Sixth Form and head of year 13 that served in high school. And SWEPS will actually be my fourth all-girls school. And I'm really excited to come aboard and help share my expertise. Um, in addition to my role as a teacher, I've also worked in tertiary education and I've worked at a couple of different universities. For four years, I was the subject specialist in business and economics at the University of Buckingham. And I was also a, a tutor there as well for the PTC program. In 2019, I was then asked by Coventry University to write the subject handbook in business and economics for their newly accredited qualification in PGCE business and economics. Um, I'm quite a big swimmer. I used to be a competitive swimmer in my youth, but more recently, I moved on to cold water swimming. And in 2019, I took part in the UK cold water swimming championships. I'm an avid rugby fan, so I'm particularly pleased with <laughs> the most recent Six Nations results. <laughs> Um, I also used to play the drums and I've played in a few different bands, uh, but more recently my personal time has been taken up with long dog walks with my little dog Paddy and watching Frozen on repeat with my little one and a half year old daughter Lily. So I'd like to kind of start by talking to you, you know, from somebody who has worked in many different sixth forms and someone who's currently leading a large sixth form with over 140 students per year group. I want to share with you what I think are some of the top priorities for students in any sixth form. First and foremost, it's comprehensive support and well-being. Um, this is the cornerstone and foundation of any sixth form and any priority for any sixth form student. It's usually the main determinant in how much you enjoy and how successful you're going to be at sixth form. Followed very closely by that is reaching your academic potential and achieving your future higher education career path. An element that's often overlooked, however, is the extensive curricular aspect. And I'm, I'm a big fan of this at schools, and I think it's very, very important to develop that skill set. Academics will open an awful lot of doors for you, but actually it's the co-curricular and it's the skills that are going to get you through that door. And I think that's absolutely paramount to have at a sixth form like SWEPS. So what makes an outstanding sixth form? To be honest, there's a lot of different elements that need to work in tandem in order to have a successful, outstanding, amazing sixth form. But if I can be honest, my main focus is to encourage students to have a sixth form whereby you are safe, supported, and welcome. For my sixth form, I want to make sure that all my students thrive and not survive. The type of environment I want is a greenhouse rather than a hothouse. So, in line with that, underpinning all of this is a comprehensive well-being program. Integral to this is to have small tutor groups and ideally allocated by subject teachers as well, if at all possible. This is really, really important considering that UCAS and some of the changes that are taking place 
form tutors need to be the first port of call. They need to have their finger on the pulse and know these changes and know their students so that they can help guide them, not just with the academics, but also with the personal aspects of things as well. Coupled with this, and I have to say, I feel really privileged to be moving to a school that has four dedicated counselors and a dedicated wellbeing room. I think this is absolutely paramount and really, really important for any thriving sixth form. Alongside the wellbeing program, we also are interested in academic progress. Um, SWEPS already has a fantastic set of results and I really look forward to joining such a fantastic team and building on those results. Um, for me, I think if I had a mantra for the sixth form, it would be no surprises. I think it's really important that we triangulate communication between parents, teachers, and students, and that we have a very open, honest, and transparent policy. Um, I like to have an open door policy. You'll see me about out and about in the sixth form. Um, I like to try and make myself available. I do all of my lesson planning, email answering at home in the evening. So that tries and frees up time during the day. So I'm available to help and support and guide you in whatever you might need. Really important to this is the idea and the prospects of supporting you with your A-level options. Um, this is really integral for the new year 12 students that are coming in. Um, I very firmly and strongly believe in early conversations and getting those subject choices right. It's really important to play to your strength because ultimately on results day, universities are going to be looking for that high flat profile. And the best way to mitigate any kind of pitfalls is to ensure that we're getting you doing the subjects that you enjoy and that you're good at and that we play to your strengths. I think it's also very important as well to challenge any kind of misconceptions. Um, I previously led two separate career departments. Um, I built up a lot of links with different universities. And so I have quite good knowledge and understanding of the different requirements for various different university courses out there. And I think it's important that we challenge those misconceptions. So for instance, rather than the idea of that you have to study maths in order to do architecture, that's not true. There are plenty of universities out there that will accept you without maths. And it's important, I think, one of the main reasons for my role is to ensure that you have all of that information. So to do that, I would be working very closely with the elite universities coordinator and the careers department to ensure that all of that information is available to you. You already have in place some fantastic opportunities such as the careers fair. I know you already have some universities links and I look forward to bringing in some of mine as well, both from universities I've worked at and from my role as head of careers as well. Finally, like I said, very important, the co-curricular and student leadership opportunities. I don't think any sixth form should be seen in isolation. At SWIPS, we have an all true school and we're part of a much bigger and wider community. And this is a fantastic way for you to get involved, not just to build on your own leadership skills, but also to be part of the bigger and wider school community. And I look forward to working with you that as well. To, to summarize, I would like to talk about what my priorities are for September, 2023. For everyone, I wanna make sure first and foremost, that all of you feel welcome, safe, and supported as you come in to SWEPS or as you, as you for year 13. Um, akin to that as well, it's very important that I get to know you as soon as possible to help you with that smooth transition. Year 12s, for you, what would be absolutely paramount is the settling in phase. And again, having spoken about early subject choices, I think that is absolutely paramount. Year 13s, my goal for you is to have an early and stress-free higher education application. I know from universities, Early applicants are often considered strong applicants, and it's really important that we manage and balance that time that's spent doing university applications versus the time it takes to learn new content and subjects and making sure that overall your well-being is well looked after as well. So thank you very much for listening, and I look forward to seeing you all very soon. Fantastic. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. That's absolutely brilliant. Thank you. Now, as many of you know, you've been involved in recording questions for Ms. Johnson, and we're going to uh, play some of those questions now, and then uh, with that, Miss Johnson will then be able to answer them. So um, here's some of those questions that uh, you've been kind enough uh, to record. Hi, I'm Amy from Year 11. And how will you help students transition from the GCSE environment to the A-level environment? Hi, hi, Amy. Um, great question. It's, it's a big step. Moving from year 11 into year 12 is a very big step. And I'm not gonna lie, there's gonna be lots of ups and downs throughout the entire year. And that is probably one of my primary, primary goals is to ensure that you are well supported throughout. 
Um, I think having a very smooth transition program is really, really important. I think it's really pinnacle that those first couple of weeks that you get to know all the ins and outs of sixth form, that you acclimatize well, and most importantly, that you pick the right subjects. And that's why I think it's so important that we have that early check-in in October. You know, you start off with your four subjects and then we have a little check-in and then we decide mm -hmm. thereafter what you're going to continue with. Because often that's what students tend to struggle with. It's the workload, it's managing that independence as well. And that's one of my primary roles to help and support you. So next question, please. Hi, I'm Millie from Year 11, and I was wondering how you'd encourage more people to come into our sixth form. Hi, Millie. Um, yes, again, great question. Um, I think we already do so many fantastic things things here at SWIPS. And I think really what we need to do is we need to shout about it. We need to let people know how great we are and all of the fantastic things. Saying that, there, there are some things I would like to look at and to embed. Um, I'm a firm believer in cohesiveness across the sixth form as well as down the school. So I will definitely look for opportunities and ways and means that we can try and bolster that sixth form, perhaps through team building activities, whether that's in residentials or even on site through assemblies or team building activities in foreign time as well. Fantastic. Next question, please. Hi, I'm Nariksha, and my question is, what are your views about sports or stress relieving activities during sixth form? Hi, Nariksha. Um, yes, I have very strong views in that. I think they are absolutely vital to a coherent sixth form. I think it's really, really, really important that we have a uh, good set of sports, good set of co-curricular, because as I said before, they are the skills that are going to get you through the door. Um, I know that you are very, very big into rowing here, yeah. and uh, I would certainly love to hear your views on perhaps other extracurricular or supercurricular activities that we can do. Uh, similarly, stress is another one. I know, particularly since COVID, things have been pretty hard for sixth formers, and there's a number of different ways in which we can try and relieve that, um, whether it's through getting in guest speakers or even finding through perhaps PSAG sessions as well, ways and means that can actually try and lower those stress levels. Hi, I'm Laura from Year 11. And what are your plans regarding helping sixth form students with our next steps like UCAS applications and personal statements? Hi, Laura. Um, very important. Um, I think it's really, really vital to build on links that you already have with existing universities, but also mm -hmm. building new ones as well. I think it's very powerful to go out and see the universities and also to talk to a range of different UCAS administrators. Um, something I've run in the past is I've done virtual university days where I've invited uh, admissions tutors to speak online and students can then ask them questions directly. I've also had admissions tutors come into school. I think we can build on your also your careers fair as well. Lots and lots and lots of opportunities. Um, I personally take the opportunity to go and visit about three to four different universities a year just so that I can get a feel for what the university is like and that way it can give you guys better guidance when it comes to applying for different universities. Fantastic. Next slide. Here we go. There we go. Oh. Hi, I'm Nariksha in Year 11. And my question is, what do you think a sixth form community should be like? Hi, Nariksha. Um, yes, sixth form community. Um, as I said in my presentation, I don't think any sixth form should be standalone. I think, you know, we are part of a much wider community. Um, I believe that the sixth form should be forward facing. I think you are our best asset. You know, you are the big people at the school. And I think the little people look up to you and it's important that they see that what we do, they will then echo through mm -hmm. out the rest of the school. So I think, you know, having those leadership opportunities, having that exposure, whether it's as part of the prefect team or subject ambassadors, just getting you out and about and visible is really, really, really important. to make sure pupils have high expectations of their work and themselves. Hi, Amy. 
Um, yes, look, it's a very, very competitive environment out there. And we really want our students to excel and really, truly reach their potential. And there's lots of extra little elements, super curricular activities that we can do, whether it's essay writing competitions, whether it's MOOCs, whether it's attending guest lectures. I think that is something that's really paramount and it's something that universities look out for on the personal statement. So I think that is definitely something that we can work on, perhaps producing a super curricular Bible for you guys to review and act on as well. Hi, I'm Eve and I'm in year 12 and I was wondering what you're most looking forward to about joining the sixth form. Um, hi Eve, I don't think there's any one thing I'm looking for. I think it's a combination of different aspects. I mean, so far I've been absolutely wowed by everything you guys have been doing here. The students I have met have been absolutely fantastic. It, as I mentioned, this is my fourth all girls school. So, you know, I'm quite used to working in this type of environment and I'm just really looking forward to getting involved, getting teaching, helping out with universities and applications as well. And to be honest, it's really lovely when you get to the end product, when you get to results day and you see everyone with those happy smiles and everyone's getting into the course that they want to get into. Hi, I'm Bethan from year 12 and I was wondering where you went to university, what you studied and whether you were planning on teaching that subject. Hi, Bethan. Um, yeah, so as I mentioned, I actually studied in Ireland. I did a BA. Uh, so in my first year, I actually did four subjects. I studied psychology, sociology, economics, and classical civilization. I then went on to major in economics and classical civilization. I also hold a master's in education, a PGCE in business studies, and I completed an MPQSL from the University of London. I am particularly big on education. I really think that everyone should always be learning. And yes, I am a teacher. I absolutely love it. I teach business and economics. And again, like I said, I always very, very intent on learning. And I've actually signed up to mark the uh, this year's paper two economics. Hi, I'm Siona and I'm in year 12. I was wondering what are your thoughts on the freedom passes which allow us to leave the school during school hours and in our freeze because we really enjoyed them and are you planning on keeping them? Hi, hi Sarah. <laughs> um, I think that's great you enjoyed them. I actually think they're a fantastic <coughs> idea. Um, from what I understand, they're very particular to SWEPs and I wholly endorse the idea. I think they're absolutely brilliant. It could be quite difficult moving from year 11 to year 12 and even the adjustment from year 12 to 13 can be quite intense. And part of my role is to make sure that I can help you with your time management and your planning. So certainly I think that Freedom Pass is a wonderful way of ensuring that. Hi, my name is Lucy and I'm in year 12. And I was wondering what your thoughts were on introducing more subject-based trips or fun days out and residentials for the sick form. Hi Lucy, yes. Absolutely. Um, in a previous school I worked at, I was actually in charge of a autumn residential trip for the six formers. So we've done various, various international residentials, such as we've gone to Paris and we've gone to Prague and uh, various other destinations as well. I wholeheartedly subscribe to that, not just for the benefit of students in that it's a good time and a good trip out, but actually by making it purposeful as well and by having something extra that you can add into your personal statement, something that makes you stand out. And alongside that, it's also very, very good for the cohesion of the sixth form. I'm a very strong believer in that, and I think people should always be getting on, and that's one sure way of making that happen. Fantastic, thank you. Well, that go, that's the, uh, the video questions that we've done, but we do have more questions, uh, Ms. Johnson, from students who've written in. So I'm gonna take okay. a few of those, if that's okay, and, uh, uh, and just to read those up. Uh, and I have to say, there's some of them are pretty tough. Um, <laughs> Uh, the first question is, what do you believe is your role as director of Sixth Form? So my role, I think, as director of Sixth Form is, as I said, to ensure that everyone in Sixth Form is welcome, safe and happy. And I do that by taking a holistic view on everything, by managing not just the well-being, but also the academic. You know, I'm here for you guys. I'm available. My, like I said, my door is always open. I'm very big in those conversations. It's if there is anything that I can do to support you to make your journey through sixth form better, I mean, that's essentially my role. That's what I, that's what I do. Mm -hmm. 
Fantastic. Thank you. So we'll go on. And um, there's been a lot of questions about the future of okay. the sixth form, as you can imagine. And um, the first one is, what is your goal for the sixth form? Um, I want to create an amazing environment for students. I want students to leave SWEPS and to look back and to consider the sixth form the best part of their formative education. Mm. You have to understand, I don't think, you know, education ends when you leave these doors. I want you to become part of the community, part mm. of the alumni, and we want to hear from you again because that's all part and parcel. You know, we want you to come back to us and to engage with the younger year groups as well. I want you to be the finished product so that future Perconians, Perconians yeah. yes, will be able to look at you and will be able to sort of say, wow, I want to be just like that person. Yeah, fantastic. And um, would you partner with another sixth form? Um, yes, absolutely. I think that I think certainly on, on some aspects, we definitely could look at that. Um, in previous schools, I have in, in all girls schools I have as well, we have partnered with um, boys schools actually um, on uh, enterprises such as Young Enterprise mm -hmm. and working with companies such as 8 Billion Ideas. I think it's a great way to meet students from other environments as well and the sharing of ideas yeah. is also really, really important. Fantastic. Um, now here's one I've received is, how would you make the sixth form more fun? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, if I can be honest, I am very, very, very partial to a chocolate drawer. Um, I think, you know, the sixth form journey Fantastic. can be quite intense. Uh, there's going to be lots of ups and downs. You know, there's sometimes where mm. it is going to be quite difficult. And I think, you know, when that does happen, I think that's when we crack out the chocolate and we all just have a little bit of a, a de-stress for an afternoon. Yeah. Fantastic. Now, there's been a number of questions about the transition from GCSE to A-levels, uh, and you've mentioned that in your presentation, but one thing that has come up is this question of stress. How do you plan to support the students when they're feeling stressful with the stress of A-levels? Um, well, there is going to be a lot of stress. Mm -hmm. there, there's, there, there, there is. There's going to be a lot of stress. And that's why I think having those four counsellors on hand, you know, counsellors, they are for everyone. Mm -hmm. Having that dedicated well-being room, on a personal level, what I'll be doing, I am like I said, available. I mm. will be out and about. I will be visible. I am there to support. Um, but we can always look at doing other things as well. Something I've brought into my own year group this year, for instance, we had a PSAG day where we had a variety of different activities to help manage stress. Everything from going for a walk along the river to mindful coloring in to reflexology, actually. Right. So lots of different elements that we can do to bring in because look, we will work hard, but we yeah. also do need our downtime as well. And that's how it, and that's how we manage our stress a bit. Brilliant. Thank you. And um, the final one of the, the written questions, as I say, is looking to change in the sixth form life. But one thing that's coming through quite strongly is how do you plan on ensuring that our student or the students use their free periods productively? Um, well, as I mentioned before, I I'm always available, or at least I try mm. to be always available. Um, I'm not the sort of person that sits in the office all day. I am always out and about. I do like to pop into lessons, pop into mm. study periods. Um, and again, that is part of support, but also just as a bit of a catch up, just to find out. Because again, if we're going to be going through the whole UCAS and other higher education uh, pathways, I think it's important that I know you as best I can in order to give you the best possible support. Fantastic. Now we're going to have some, some fun questions, which I know that you don't know are coming, and I'm going to bring these up. So these are sort of one-word answers, as quick as you possibly can, to give a, some idea, I think, of who you are. Okay. So the first one is, uh, do you play sports? I do play sports. Um, as I mentioned, I was an avid swimmer. I, I still try and do a little bit in cold water swimming. I've recently got into hit quite a bit, so that's mainly what I've been working on at the moment. But uh, quite a keen cyclist as well. I've done some big cycling, cycles in my time. I cycled to Holland. I've cycled the Camino de Santiago, which is across France and Spain. So, yeah, I would consider myself quite an active person. Yeah, absolutely. clearly. Fantastic. And um, slightly moving completely differently, what's your favourite type of cheese? Uh, anything on a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Um, do you like rowing? I do like rowing. Um, I'm not very good at it, but, yes, I do enjoy watching it. And, actually... Uh, some of my cold water swims uh, take place in Henley every year, in the summer every year, wow. right before the regatta. So, yeah. Wow. There we are. Do you think you could win The Apprentice? Well, I teach business, so I hope so. <laughs> but there is some tough competition out there. It certainly is. What made you realise that you wanted to be ahead of sixth form? Um, well, as an economics and business teacher, I think for the majority of my teaching career, mm. I've always very much taught in the sixth form environment. Yeah. And I have to say, it's it's a brilliant environment. It's very different from back home. It's not like when I went to school. Mm -hmm. it, there's a lot more independence. You really get to know your students a lot better as well. And as I said before, I 
I think one of the highlights for me is once we've gone through that whole cycle and we get to results day and the absolute sheer joy of, you know, going on and moving to the next step. And I thought to myself, that's something I want to be part of. And that's something I want to lead. Fantastic. What's your favorite TV show? Peaky Blinders. Ah, good choice. <laughs> What's your favorite color? Purple. Excellent. What is at the top of your bucket list? To swim the channel. What's your dream holiday destination? I would say to go back to Bali, I think. Yeah, very nice. Bali. Yeah, very nice. What was the last thing you cooked and how did it turn out? Um, last night I cooked pasta, sauce and cheese for my one and a half year old and it was, went down fantastically. She ate all of it. Oh, excellent. So what advice would you give your 16 year old self? Um, take it slow. Don't rush into decisions. Good idea. Good, good advice. What instruments do you play? Uh, I play a couple. I play the drums. Um, I also play the Irish traditional flute. And I have a go at playing the guitar, but I'm not very good. Excellent. Well, we'll hopefully see the flute in at some yeah, point. Well. Brilliant. What are you currently watching on TV? Uh, Happy Valley. Ah, excellent. What's your greatest achievement so far? Uh, my little baby girl. Yeah. What would be your dream job? Oh, this job. Oh, of course. <laughs> excellent. What's your favorite book? Uh, Nick Hornby, High Fidelity. Ah, very good choice. And if you could bring back one extinct species, which would it be and why? I would say the giant sloth, because it's one of my favorite things to look at whenever I go to the Natural History Museum. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much. That was really, really helpful. And I thank you for watching uh, this uh, broadcast. I hope it's been really helpful to you. Um, now, of course, I know there are questions that you still want answered. We haven't been able to cover all the questions that I'm sure you have. But, um, but don't worry. If you do have some questions, then by all means, there's an email attached at the end of this link that you can ask anything you like to Miss Johnson who can answer. Um, and I'm sure he'll be very only too happy to answer Absolutely. any of your questions. Uh, so once again, thank you so much for joining us. Bye-bye. Thank you.